My name is Daniel Timmons. Over the past years, I have gone through and through and went through and through a lot. It all begins with how I was dealing with autism and how Jim Henson's creation got me inspired on how to work, build, and so much more through education and entertaining millions of people around the world. But all of you may be wondering, how did I get involved with the puppet? Where I got started? And when did this all happen? Shoot. This is my puppeteer's life's journey. On August 29th, 1993, I, myself as a kid, couldn't speak nor make eye contact with anybody. My parents just took me to see the doctors from Hopkins and Hershey Hospital. Both of them had the same results that I do have autism. The doctors said to my parents that I wouldn't be able to live with them and that I would be living in a home with no one else to talk to, all by myself, alone. Is there anything else that we could possibly do? Oh dear. Come on, honey. Let's go. That's definitely a dance theme song for sure. Yep. So I first noticed differences when you were still an infant. Um, I didn't understand until a couple of years later that those were signs of autism. It was it was interesting in that we had to be we had to be very aware of things that you were doing uh, because for the first four years you didn't speak and so we had to uh, look for signs. My parents prayed to God that I would be able to speak. My dad would take me out and uh, taking a uh, walk outside. He told me to look at an object and say to me, Okay, son, I want you to uh, say tree here. Can you please can you say tree for me? Can you please say tree for your dad here? Dad was uh, very uh, working and tried his absolute best to help me say some words that I haven't said yet. Uh, what am I going to do for you, son? Come on, son. No, let's keep walking. And then before I hey, went off to bed, my mom kissed me on the forehead and said to me, Good night, Daniel. Love you. But then something happened. I started to say my first sentence of, Good night, Mom. I love you. My mom was both shocked and amazed with tears of joy in her eyes. She thanked the Lord for giving me a chance to speak. Thank you, Lord. I was between four or five years old when I first said the sentence to my own mom.
After a while, my family started to help me learn make some new stuff, like riding the bike, pig, and many others, to name a few. There's been so many shows and movies that I enjoy watching with my whole family, like watching the beloved classic shows of the Three Stooges, Looney Tunes, and for movies that I really like were Cats Don't Dance, Marx Brothers, The Iron Giant, The Jungle Book, The Lion King, and many others to name a few. But for me, I was watching Blue's Clues, To Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and the one show that I watched was Sesame Street. The show itself helped me a lot from learning ABCs and 123s. And of course, the original 1979 film of the Muppet Movie. So when I started to watch Sesame Street as, as a kid in the early 90s, honestly, they helped me a lot right now when it comes to like learning the shapes and sizes, counting the numbers, first, and also so learning the alphabet is and it definitely helped me you know, a lot the all the throughout my kid years and when i started to watch the very first muppet movie and and since this was like during the 90s and so far we basically had like a video cassette tape of the, the movies that we had in the early 90s or in this case all throughout the entire 90s honestly just watching that particular movie of the Muppet movie, not only that it made a huge impact on my life, but but when it comes to like like the amazing puppetry work, that all throughout the entire movie was absolutely just mind blowing. From the incredible music to like the storytelling, to to how the characters move and how they they play and and start to meet so many people around them was was absolutely quite wonderful and absolutely phenomenal. And I wanted to figure out who literally made this, this but also create these wonderful characters. And during the end credits, this, when I saw the name of like Jim Henson, I was just like, Jim Henson? Who the heck is Jim Henson? This, who is this guy? Did he create all this? this? Did he make this movie? I need to know. So after watching that particular movie, I I basically told my parents that I wanted to see about going over to the library and just find a book and try to do some research on that particular person of Jim Henson. And when I found the one book that literally caught my attention, and I basically grabbed that book and basically they told the library, and that I would like to um, uh, take it home with me. And I, I basically bought the book. Uh, and I basically went back home. And sure enough, when I started to um, read that particular book here and there, um, I, was, I was completely just mind blown. Uh, because not only that he was a, not only that he was like a puppeteer when he, he made the movie of the Muppet movie, but then he also worked on so many other projects. Uh, it was super earlier, there and started to work on uh, so many different movies during the time, uh, like with Sam and Friends to Sesame Street, The Muppet Show, Fraggle Rock, to the animated series of The Muppet Babies, uh, and now with the whole The Great Muppet Caper to Muppets Take Manhattan, then to to basically the non uh, uh, Muppet uh, films to like 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 with the Dark Crystal to like Labyrinth and finally like the Sesame Street presents then it's Fall That Bird and I was like he literally made all this I like what the heck and I also read that that he literally didn't do this alone always that could have been uh, such a big struggle go and put like a lot of stress this on him but then at least he had such wonderful help coming from his friends and families and co-workers girls and staff who basically not only to like build puppets but also perform these puppets which to be honest even i did not know no so it was it was such a wonderful experience to basically just trying to learn all this, this stuff 
And when I got to a part of where Jim basically passed away in 1990, I was, I was just words cannot describe of the of what literally just happened. And when I read about him passing away on May 16th in the year of 1990, and and this was like literally just three years after I was, was born. And I I did not know that Jim literally just passed away. And to be honest, it would have been nice if I could basically want to at least just meet him for the first time in person. Just so I can at least just tell him how truly I'm grateful that he such, made such wonderful characters. But I definitely wanted to at least just tell him him or maybe ask a few questions to him you know, on any kind of advice is on you know, when it comes to like learning how to work with puppets or people who want to become puppeteers you know, tears as a career job I just wish I could have met him in, in person but the one thing I did learn was that he wrote a letter to his friends families and co-workers and to the fans uh, who, who definitely he had this beautiful well, but very inspirational quote uh, uh, for uh, for uh, for everyone and I definitely feel like like these particular quotes in general that I read and basically just, uh, just like keep on listening to what Jim basically said to his entire family to his friends uh, and to the fan who grew up with Jim's creation it was so inspiring and it, it, it was just incredible so I honestly could not at least just be be like be so happy to to learn from Jim's experience on when it came to like performing and building puppets but also learn some of these famous quotes that's here and there and from the movies and the shows that he made over the years and with the help from his friends and family and some of his, his staff and co-workers it's been a more full and absolutely a, a terrific learning experience so now i'm hanging off to school working hard and making a good career of becoming a puppeteer for the muppets for Jim Henson, to his friends, family, and to the fans who grew up watching the amazing and magically work of Jim Henson. Well, here we go. By the time school got started, I was very shy and kind of nervous to be meeting some people along the way. For the rest of the school year, my favorite classes that I enjoy coming to are History, Math, and Chorus. The only classes that I did have some troubles with are English, Reading, and Science as well. But one thing is for sure, I did have some, some very good helpers to help me out when it comes to doing so much homework to do. One of the other things that I had to do in school was doing some sign language, how to pronounce some words. Like with the word that I have struggled with is with the TH it's here. My parents has asked a helper to help me with on how to say or practice some words and vowels in this too. Over the past couple of days, I've been trying my best to practice and to pronounce some words. And sure enough, I've slowly but surely got the hang of it. Plus, my family also helped me out when I had to figure some problems or that I need to be ready for the test. The greatest challenge I had working with Dan was when it came to writing. Danny didn't like to write, so I would scribe for him. Getting his thoughts organized was probably the biggest challenge. Dan did like math, 
and was able to go to regular ed classes except for the reading and writing. He received honor roll every semester that I worked with him, and I'm very proud of him for that. Danny also liked dressing up for Halloween in his favorite characters like Elvis and Beetlejuice. <laughs> My very favorite memory of Dan though is when he participated in the talent contest. He did the skit, Who's on First, with one of his puppets. Puppetry is Dan's favorite passion. The Muppets and Jim Henson are his idols. He did the skit without stuttering and he won first place. His friends and the auditorium cheered him on, and he was so proud of winning that award. I also started to play two sports of both baseball in the Little League and basketball at my own school. Speaking of basketball, I've started to meet two very special basketball coaches who gave me the important lesson in how we play it. The one thing I can say that. I learned coming from my coaches is that it's important that you take your time wisely and without being rushed. One of my favorite things about working with Dan in the schools is that he had so many friends and so much support. He loved being there. He loved working hard, having fun. He participated in activities and even in school musicals. For chorus, I have enjoyed singing with my friends during the holidays and singing the beloved classic songs as well. But the one thing I did enjoy of being in chorus was being part in the musicals, like Susical the Musical, Oklahoma, and thoroughly Marn Millie. It was truly amazing to be in it with my friends and had a blast of getting to know so many people that I enjoy talking and hanging out with my friends. I have also made some friends with the teachers at my own school. And I did enjoy some of their classes as well, even if some of them were hard. But I still enjoy working really hard and getting the job done. Me and my family will go on traveling and see all of the different places from New York City, Virginia Beach, Philly, a really awesome western town in Colorado of Buckskin Joes along with a train ride as well. I think of my best good buddy, my amazing younger brother, Daniel. I have two specific memories that come into my mind. One of them is sort of like general experience with him is playing Nancy Drew games and him having way better spatial understanding than me um, and like kicking my butt when it comes to certain puzzles. And then the second one, which he still is mad at me for, is when we were in Virginia Beach with our mom. I really wanted to go to this haunted fun house and I was under the impression it was gonna be more fun than haunted, and he didn't want to, but mom convinced him. She was like, listen, Daniel, we've done a lot of what you wanted to do, let's do something that she wants to do. And it was like, okay, at first, just like ooey gooey, gore blood bleh, not like anything too scary. He wasn't a fan of it though. He was like, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this, no thank you. So then we get to a different part of the haunted fun house and it's jump scares and I don't do good with jump scares. I am very jumpy. So Daniel and I were scared poopless. I'm going to censor myself just for him. We were scared poopless trying to climb on mom so we could both be in the middle to be safe and she was like 
feeling through the dark and we get through, I lose my flip flop. So mom has to run back in, find my flip flop, come back out. But at the end of the haunted fun house was this black light glow in the dark, um, under the sea themed mini golf, which was a lot of fun. And Daniel had only agreed to do the haunted fun house if we could do the mini golf afterwards. So we get through the haunted fun house and he goes, Laura, that was not fun that was only haunted and i was like daniel i'm so sorry i thought it would be more fun and he was like nothing was fun nothing <laughs> he was so mad at me but i would have to say those are my two favorite memories with daniel growing up with a big family means that you take a lot of trips things like impromptu trips to see your cousins over the weekend because they only lived three hours away one of my favorite trips and easily my most memorable one with daniel was getting to play against the Houston Challenger Division of Little League on the South Lawn of the White House. This was a big trip and had an itinerary that included meeting President Bush and a couple MLB Hall of Famers. Daniel very much wanted to make the most of this trip and had a plan. We played two innings of baseball so that each team could have a turn at bat, and afterwards we lined up to meet the esteemed gentlemen. We shake hands, we introduce ourselves, we take the picture, and then I turn to Daniel and ask, Hey! Daniel, don't you have a question for the president? Daniel turns to President Bush and brightly asks him, Excuse me, Mr. President, but I was wondering if you'd like to go on vacation with my family to Disney World. The three men laughed heartily, and President Bush responded by saying, I'd love to, Daniel, but I'm afraid I'm going to be very busy for a while. We scampered off and enjoyed the rest of the day, but that was definitely the highlight of our trips. So many places that we go to, and so many different cities and places that we saw and having a great time and having a great time. I think that one of my favorite places to be was in Orlando, Florida, where me and my family went to Disney World back in 2000s. We had a wonderful time over there, plus we got to see Fantasmic Show over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, formerly known as Disney's MGM Studios back then. Also, one of my favorite attractions from there was Muppet Vision 3D. It was truly wonderful and terrific to watch in 3D. In 2006, just finished up with 5th grade back at school and getting ready for summer vacation. I told my 5th grade teacher that my mom, my cousin, and I are going to California and I are gonna go to Hollywood, California for our trip. He told to have fun and have a safe trip over there. When we arrive in Hollywood, after a very long airplane ride, we stop at our hotel for some rest from Pennsylvania to California in over three hour trip. When we woke up, me, my mom, and my cousin did some sightseeing from the Hollywood Wax Museum to the Kodak Theater with the Walk of Fame and got a bus tour of Hollywood and so Come on, son. Yeah, let's get going. Well. When we got back from our sightseeing, Ooh. both my mom and my cousin and I just saw the, the Jim Henson Company for the, for the first time in forever. I was so amazed to see it for real, and I was 12 years old back in 2006. Look at that, Mom. Oh, what you uh, uh, see there, son? Oh, you know, if I worked really hard, built some puppets, and performing puppets, then, may be, then maybe I can hopefully work for the Jim Henson Studio, and maybe for the Muppets as well. Yep. When all three of us were done with taking a trip out to California, it was time for all of us to head back home and for me to get ready to go back to school. From 6th to 12th grade, finishing up with homework, basketball game, and so much more. Well, here goes nothing. It was time for me to graduate the high school with the and all of my friends too.
During the rest of my school years, I've been thinking about having another career job. I told my helper about becoming a director. I think the reason for this was because I wanted to do so much more than just puppeteering and see of what it is like to become a director. When it comes to being a director, were the two theaters in Williamsport, PA. The first theater was the Community Arts Center, where me and my helper went inside and talked to some people over there on how everything works both on and off stage. Plus we got to see the backstage where we got to see the curtains and props in the background as well. Also, the people who worked on the lights and sound showed me how they work when it comes to the shows and performances as well. It was pretty cool to see of how it worked and see these people who worked on both the stage and the lights as well. The next month, my helper and I went over to the Community Theater League where they do their own shows as well. I got to see the director's chair and I asked my helper to take a picture of me sitting down on a director's chair. After visiting the two theaters, it was time for me and my helper to head back to school. I went to the library to check out the books on how the director worked and what it was like to become a director as well. After doing some reading, and I started to work on making a PowerPoint and show my classmates about what it was like to become a director. When it came to making shows and movies, the one thing I didn't realize was that the director can also have or build their own theme park, cruise, and make a Broadway show in New York for about $50,000. Finishing up and showing PowerPoint about the director to my classmate and my teacher about it. In 2012 to 2013, I had to rethink and talk to my career teacher and my helper. I decided not to have the career of being a director. You know, I think I should probably change my career job. Oh? Yeah, I think I will rather stick to being a puppeteer rather than to be a director for another career job. Of course, Dan. Okay, Dan. Whatever totally floats your boat. After all, this is your decision, not mine. Let's go. Okay. Hello everyone, my name's Tommy Baggett. Um, I've known Dan Temmins since elementary school. He's been a friend for a long time. Um, ever since I can remember, Dan has always been an entertainer and has a real passion for entertaining people. Um, whether it was his Abbott and Costello comedy bits at CI's camp or his many different impressions that he does so well, um, Dan has a real passion for uh, making people laugh and bringing enjoyment to other people's lives. Um, he's definitely touched my life in a very positive way. And um, I know Dan has wanted to be a puppeteer for a very long time. Um, and I just wanted to wish him all the luck in the world. I know that he's going to um, work at this until, until it comes true. So, uh, Dan, I just wanted to wish you good luck, brother, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Congratulations, son. Congratulations, congratulating high school there, son. We're definitely proud of you. Yep. Let's go back home. We got something we wanted to show you. Yep, it's something really special for your graduation. Let's go. Yep. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Also, okay. Let's go home. After I finished high school in 2013, my parents got me a laptop for my graduation gift. Ooh, a laptop. Thank you so much, you guys.
Well, damn. <clears throat> this is it. Over the years, I've been watching YouTube videos and been thinking that maybe I could start making a channel and make some really good videos for everyone to enjoy. Hmm. I wonder if I could probably make my own YouTube channel and probably make some videos as well too. I don't think that's totally a bad idea here. Wouldn't you agree, folks? Hmm. Well... Let's go ahead and do it. I did make my own channel that was on my old laptop called Dan Timmons, but in 2017, my laptop was not working, and in that it was pretty much getting very old. I tried my best to turn it off, and turn it back on again, but it keeps turning itself off again. So now, I can't get back to my old channel anymore. This was very struggling for me and for my own YouTube channel. Hey mom, uh, hey Daniel, what's going on son? Well, it's kind of like this you see. My laptop uh, uh, is not working and um, I think it's high time I get myself a uh, new laptop. Hmm, I see. Okay, let's go ahead and try to fix it, and, and if it doesn't work, we'll get you a new laptop, okay? Okay, Mom, thank you. Let's go, son. Okay, Mom. Greetings, everyone. So, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a heads up to what's going on. Well, you see, my old laptop wasn't working so well. And unfortunately, I can't get back to my old YouTube channel anymore. So as of right now, I'll be starting a brand new channel from scratch. And hopefully give you guys some wonderful content and some wonderful entertainment as well too. Anyways, please, please make sure that you like this video, comment, and subscribe to the brand new YouTube channel of mine. And thanks for watching. Hopefully I'll give you guys some more up. They hate and some uh, layer content and some wonderful entertainment. And then right here onto the brand new YouTube channel of mine. See you later, everyone. Bye bye. I met Dan back, I think, in 2020, actually. Uh, I had joined a new Discord group, and he was actually one of the first people to greet me. He's always been such a kind soul, one of my favorite people in the voice acting community online, 100%. Just such, such a pure, kind, wonderful, wonderful soul. And I'm so glad to know him. Um, we have been friends since then, and I have tried to be a great friend and like a support to him in some ways. I definitely have tried to participate however I can in his projects. I was a voice in his Muppet Christmas Carol full fan dub. And I just, I take such joy in seeing him succeed. He's just such a wonderful soul and he deserves the world. So I really hope that that, can, that he continues to flourish as he is right now. I still had to make sure that I told well, my viewers who is out there on YouTube that I will be making some brand new content and wonderful entertainment as well. From the ending month of January of 2017 that I start then my new channel and all the up to this month of uh, July 2020 I have gained over 410 plus subs onto my channel. And I honestly couldn't be more grateful and thankful to all the viewers, the subscribers, to my friends and family for their amazing support and everything as well. I've asked my family about making a series 
on YouTube that features the puppets. Over the years, I've been working on making some fan stubs and full fan dubs on any Muppet related stuff when it comes to doing collabs and covers with the help from my friends online. Plus, it has been a great honor and privilege to have met these people and becoming friends and work with them on so many projects from time to time. During this time, both me and my dad were trying to see about me getting a job with Sesame Workshop to work for Sesame Street. Is there somebody that you would like to see or meet? We would like to see somebody. Uh, oh dear, I totally forgot. Oh dear. Sorry to hear about that. That's okay, sir. But I do wish this your son the best of luck on his puppeteering career. But it didn't go so well. We did, however, go to the Jim Henson Workshop in New York, and one person let us in and gave us a tour to the Henson Workshop. Is there, is there somebody you would like to meet? Hi there. Here. We're looking to see if we can talk to, um, um, Cheryl Henson. Yeah, Cheryl Henson. Is she available? Hmm. Well, unfortunately, she's not here right now, but, um, oh, oh dear. Well, um, is there any way we can contact her or any of the Henson's kids? You know what? I think maybe I could probably help you out. Give me one second. Yeah, let me go ahead and grab something for you. Here you go. Here's a business card. Hopefully this will probably help you out. Oh. Thank you very much, sir. Have a good day. My pleasure. You guys have a wonderful day now. Sure enough, that's what me and my dad did. Since both me and my dad went over to New York City, me and New York, and went to a place where they were making puppets. It's called the Muppet Whatnot Workshop. When we got there, we made our own puppets that was based off of our ourselves and they look amazing. So now, we took both of our puppets back home in Williamsport. Once both of my dad and I he, he got our own puppets and hang back home, I had to he, give my pup the, a perfect he, name here. Well, looks like we got everything we needed. Yep. You wanna he, head back home, Dad? Sure thing, son. At least now you got everything that you needed. Yep. Uh, let's go home. Alrighty then. Whew. Okay, so I got my own uh, puppet here, so I should probably give this puppet a name here, so. Hmm. What kind of uh, name would be good for this puppet here? You know, since he, he definitely looks like, like me here, you know, I should probably he, he call my the puppet, the uh, 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 Dan the Puppet. Not a bad name. Definitely not a bad name here. I also got uh, some other puppets that I got uh, from uh, my birthday uh, gift from my helper uh, back at school. In 2016 uh, and up to 2020, I've made at least four seasons of the YouTube series of Ask a Puppet. In season in you know, one of having the original the three puppets of Dan, Dad, and Bart the Barnacle. Season two is where I introduced uh, the little puppet named Jack, and he, he joined the group. Now, both season three and season four, I've asked my family and to the viewers that I will be introducing some female puppet characters into the series itself. Into the series itself. But the only problem is, where am I going to find some female puppets for the series itself? So I did some research to see if I can find some female puppets. And sure enough, I found one puppet that looks like my mom and one puppet as a cheerleader. So I purchased the two puppets from online and now I named the one puppet with a flower dress as the mom puppet and the cheerleader her puppet, I've named her Audrey. So I've got the two female puppets for both season three and season four as well. Plus. 
I just just finished making both episode four and five right onto my channel. Hopefully, I will be doing some more episodes in season four, and maybe, just maybe, in the near future, I'll be seeing about making a fifth season for the series itself. But who knows? Only time will tell. After so much of video making and uploading onto YouTube, whether it be puppet or Muppet related stuff, it's putting me a lot of stress and I've, and I've become a workaholic. Plus, I've kept on sending a lot of videos to the Henson kids over at the Henson studio and prayed to God hoping that I would get a job of working for the Muppets at both either the Henson studio or the Walt Disney studio. Part of me is like that I've gotten so far and my dream is almost coming true. But other times I start to feel and having some self-doubt in myself. By that I mean do I have any confidence in myself that I could make millions of people happy through entertainment and education as well? I think maybe I'll probably go for a walk outside. Probably get some fresh air going on. Yep, yeah, I definitely think that will probably do it for sure. My friends and my family, including my brother, who I talk to, when I am uh, not feeling like myself, they told me that if I am proud of what I'm doing, whether I am doing this for fame and fortune, and whether I could change my personality as well, I told them that I was proud for what I was doing when it comes to using these puppets for entertainment, education, and I was not looking for any kind of fame and fortune. Once I told them my answer to their question, they said to me to never put so much of self-doubt onto yourself and always keep your head held high without any complaining about it. Hey Dan. Oh, hey Jack. 
Hey, are you doing okay there, Dave? Well, yeah, I guess. Here, let me sit down with you. Oh, sure. <sighs> Is there something in the barn thing, Dave? Well, I don't know. I feel like I'm just having a little bit of self-doubt into myself. Like, like what? Like, sometimes I feel like that if I'm doing this for like the right thing, you know, I mean. Well, here's my question for you, Dan. Are you doing this for like fame and fortune? Well, no. I'm just doing this to like entertain and educate a lot of people, you know. Well, then, uh, uh, never try to put so much of self down into yourself, you know? Besides, you and your, your friends and family have always he's been there for you, and not only that, but they always help you out, support you, no matter what happens. Hmm. Yeah. So... So never try to put so much of self down into yourself. Just keep your head held high and you know, just keep moving forward. You know what? Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for your help there. Sometimes, sometimes I just need a little bit of encouragement from my uh, friends and my family. Yeah, for sure. Any hey time, Dan. Let's head back home. Okay. This helped me so much because my biggest fear that I have been also struggling besides the autism part was that the self-doubtness is getting to and putting so much weight onto me but with my but but with my help and encouragement coming from my family and friends I feel so much better after hearing all of that Da -da -da. Hey, Dan. It's me, John here, and I got a message for you. Let's take these glasses off. So, this message is to you goes like this. Your puppeteering over the years has been badass. Your dancing, all that great puppeteering is fantastic. And you really earned your way to get into Henson Studios. I'm very proud of you. And all the nice, kind things you've done for me over the years. Being a great friend, having my back. Helping me in Silverwing Militia with the streams. Helping me in other projects for my main channel, Jonathan Moline. And just being a good friend. You know what? I really want you to continue being you. Be happy. Enjoy life. And I've seen you happy every day. Matter of fact... You know, it's funny. I'm recording this. I'm recording this. You guys are on the sc uh, screen right now. Talking to my Discord server. Huh. Funny, right? Told you I'd make a video. Anyways, Dan, I want you to know that I care about you. And when you see this, hope you enjoy it. Because I'm proud of you. You got this, bro. Your puppeteering's sick. S stay frosty, my friend, and I'll catch you in the next one. I got a jam. Peace. Rock on. And from that day on, I will remember that and hold on to that advice for many years into the future. I will never ever forget of what my own basketball coach once said to me. But it truly helps me a lot. Knowing that over the past decade, I'm willing to take my time wisely without being rushed. Plus, my basketball coach also told me, along with my friends and teammates, during any other basketball game and or basketball camp that it's also important to make some really good decisions in life itself.
and no making bad decisions because once you graduate from high school and finding really good career but it's also important that all of us need to be very careful out there in the real world because of many people have made some poor or bad decisions in life. So from here on and out, all of us know that we will be making some good decisions. But it's also important for all of us to invest our time wisely without being rushed. And I think that it's one of the most important lessons that I and everyone else should listen to and not disappoint our her own basketball coach for his own advice or lesson that he has, has taught us. Our most important thing that I learned from all of my friends and family was to never ever put so much self-doubt onto yourself. Sometimes when you put so much of self-doubt onto yourself, you are becoming less confident and it's becoming unhealthy for your mind and your body to tackle. Just remember, Dana, what your coach just said to you at the camp and the game itself of basketball. Take your time wisely without being rushed. Just take your time. Invest your time wisely without being rushed. Let's do this. So, when it comes to my brother Daniel, um, we'll start with uh, when I first met Daniel. Um, it was when my wife, his sister, um, brought me to the family to meet everybody um and we were in the family room all watching a movie together it's great having a great time um and uh you know a little commentary just just having fun hanging out and after the movie uh, he says to me he goes hey david i'm like yeah daniel what's up he goes how would you like to be my best friend and, um, obviously I said yes, so that, that just sealed that forever. Um, but, I mean, the dude's got love like I've never seen before, just generally. And so much passion for what he does. And, and his dedication to his craft is, is just something i've never seen before in anybody uh, he loves what he does and he loves to spread that love and that joy to whoever he can um and it's just it's incredible seeing him do the things that he does between his youtube channel and his puppetry and now this project he's just uh he's an incredible guy overall that's all i can really say i have met dan in since seven years and it's about to be eight years uh in 2024 my experience with dan is is awesome uh he has been a great great friend and i was very happy to become his best friend over the years and he's so kind, he's caring, and he, he knows how to make people laugh. I always drew like very cool art for him and uh, everything else. And he also did something for me as well. And I'm all very happy about it. Um, Dan is the greatest friend I have ever met throughout the years. And whenever I feel down, I always come to him uh he he makes he checking on me and make sure i'm feeling okay 
uh, to message to Dan. Um, I'm very happy that I have a friend like you. Um, we all we'll always be best friends forever, no matter where we go, no matter uh, if we're like very busy. You will always be my friend, and I am happy and thankful for that. Not only that, but for over 14 to 16 years, I couldn't have done this without all of my friends, family, and to everyone who have been supporting and helping me on this very long journey from the past to the present. To be honest, I was so afraid, nervous, but the biggest problem that I have out of all of them was having any self-doubt into myself. Out of all of them was having self-doubt in myself. I feel like I don't have the gut nor the strength to do all of this. But I will say this, if it hasn't been for all of my friends, family, and to everyone who helped and get me out of my self-doubting, don't be scared, worried, or be afraid. We will always have your back and we'll be supporting and helping you on your own puppeteer journey. Just keep on persevering, keep your head up high, and don't think about any negativity. Focus on the positivity. My friends, family, and I also talked about how I am not doing this for some fame and for fortune. I'm doing this for my family, friends, to my own idol of Jim Henson, to his friends, family, co-workers, and to all of the Muppet fans out there who wanted to find their own rainbow connection, to follow their dreams, and making millions of people happy. That is the most important lesson of this. Always take your time wisely without being rushed. Also, never ever let your self-doubt and anxiety get to you. Just try to be calm, relax, and focus on what you need to do in life itself. I know that's what I'm going to be doing, but I do hope that this lesson or advice will help you out on your long journey to wherever your dream will take you. And this is, this is how my puppeteer journey has begun. And who knows? Who knows of when my puppeteer journey career will end? Only time will tell. Gotta keep moving forward, keep my head held high, and never put so much of self doubt into myself. And so, that is where it all started, and how or when it all happened. From the important lessons and advice from my own basketball coach, and to visiting a lot of places to see, and from building puppets, to be making videos, and so much more. I wouldn't have gotten this far and wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all my friends, family, and to everyone that I have met over the past 30 years, years of my life. But throughout the years that I have been struggling, dealing with autism and life itself, along with the people that I have met and the places I have been with my family as well, and to making some V views on YouTube, I've learned that it's important to never put so much self-doubt and don't stress onto your, yourself here. Focus on taking your time without trying to rush things and remember that you are never ever alone in the world. So long as you have got wonderful and amazing people who are willing to help you, to guide you, and to support you no matter what happens.
Sure, there were there lots of ups and downs, but there is one the thing that my basketball coach this once told me it's important to invest your time wisely without uh, being rushed hey coach is there something you want to tell me yes dan uh, remember when i said to you uh, about uh, in, in basketball camp and uh, most importantly in the basketball game along with life itself oh what's that it's important uh, to invest your time wisely hey without trying to rush things. Hmm. I'll keep that in mind, coach. Thank you. No problem, Dan. Uh, have a good uh, uh, day and keep up the great work. Thanks, coach. Building and making a puppet and finally making some videos and publishing to my own YouTube channel, this has been a heck of a journey for me. In 2020, at the end of June, my dad got a call from the Henson Studios. I was so shocked to hear this news. So, my dad told me and mom all about the whole thing. I was on the Henson's radar. I think we did a pretty good job here, don't you think so, Dan? Yep. It's always it's nice to clean the pool up for sure. Mm -hmm. Honey, Dan, oh. Oh, I got wonderful news. Oh, what's up, Dad? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's going on? I just got a uh, call from the Henson Studio. For here, here's what they, they told me to tell you. You see, the Henson Studio told me that. I'm so proud of you, son. Come on, let's go ahead and celebrate. This is wonderful to hear. Oh, my goodness. And they were encouraging me to keep making videos and sending them, start building puppets, and write my resume and a story about why I wanted to become a puppeteer in the first place. Talk about a very he, narrative and heady dewy proportions here. Yep. Whew. And I was so happy to hear that I was taking one big step in my puppeteer career. After almost 14 years of work. But one thing is for sure, my parents did tell me that I will be taking some baby steps before taking a giant step up for my career. And my work and their persistence is, may get me a job working with the Muppets this and Henson Studio. The moral of my story is that I think it is important to never give up on your dream. Keep on persevering. In life, we all need to make decisions. And those decisions will determine where the path will take us. As long as you have terrific friends and family and people who support and care for you and help you on your lifelong journey, your journey will be wonderful. And now I would like to say to all of my friends, family, and supporters around the world, thank you for helping me and supporting me on this puppeteer journey. My hope is to not only entertain and educate people through the magic and creativity of puppetry, but also to give you good advice, insight, and support on your, your journey. If you ever feel like giving up because you aren't any good, don't let the self-doubt stop you. Never give up on yourself or your dream. So, with that said, thanks for the memories. Ready to go? Yep, let's go.
Thanks to the lovers, the dreamers.